Hey guys, this is the second part of the design pattern. Let's see what we got for this lecture. Uh, before we learned that there are a lot of design pattern types, for example, architectural pattern, class design, and so forth. We, we covered all of these, uh, I mean the types uh, in the previous lecture. And also <clears throat> from the architectural pattern, uh, we cover these two, multi-layered or multi-tiered, and also the famous and important uh, architectural design pattern, MVC or model view controller. So in this lecture, uh, we are going to just focus on the class design. What is class design pattern? So let's let's take a look at the scope of this kind of uh, you know design patterns. So before when we were talking about the architectural design pattern, we said uh, they try to look at the software as a whole. All right. So if this is the software, so those design patterns look at the software as a whole and then they divide it into some pieces and then they define how these pieces should communicate with each other all right but now in the class design patterns we just focus on a small portion of the application. For example, if we are working on this layer, we just, you know, look at a small portion of this layer and it, it can contain one class or a few classes. So that's why we say this design pattern is very suitable for constructing components. All right. So overall, we have three types of, uh, you know, class design patterns. Creational, those patterns that just try to create or in, instantiate a class in, in a very specific way. Architectural pattern, those that, uh, you know, uh, organize our uh, you know, some portion of the application in a specific way and behavioral that uh, try to uh, change or define or redefine the behavior of a, a class or a portion or, I mean, a few classes uh, together. So in this lecture, we will cover this single tone from the first group and these two composite and facade from the second group and also strategy uh, and template method uh, design pattern from the third group. What is singleton design pattern? Okay, so let me first explain about some situations that it, this can happen. I mean, uh, in some situation, we need on one and only one instance of an object at runtime. What does it mean? It means that we, we should prevent a class being instantiated more than once because we, we, we need only one of them to be alive during the whole application's runtime. What does it mean? So, so, so the two questions raises here immediately. What situations can have, you know, can need only one and only one instance of an object? And also, if we understand those situations, then the second question would be, how can we restrict a class being instantiated more than once? All right. 
Okay, so first let me take some examples from uh, you know the situations that we really need one instance of a, an object. Here is the first one. In your application, you need a random generator. So some for some reasons you need to have a global random uh, random generator to be you know used in the whole application in many classes so only one so that's why you need to make it a global random generation generator and when you make it you know global it means that when you instantiated it once you cannot in you, you should you shouldn't be able to instantiate it more than once otherwise they will conflict to each other right only one instance of the random generator should be alive at a time all right so in this is one example that we need one instance of an object another one can be connection to the database you know connection to the database is a little bit uh, you know costly i mean uh, it 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 will uh, uh, it, it will have some overload on your application if you want to connect to the database many many times during the uh, you know when your application is running so in these cases we would like to uh, instantiate the connection to the database once probably at, you know when we, first we need this and then we we should keep that connection alive until uh, our application as long as the application is running all right so this is one situation that uh, we need to have uh, you know one instance of uh, an object another example could be a global logger what is logger logger is a piece of code or or let's say component whose job is to uh, write the information about your uh, application at runtime so so it it it, it uh, writes everything inside a file it is that's why we call it log file and just in case if anything happens you know at runtime then you as a developer uh, read the log file and figure out that what could you know go wrong during the runtime all right so this is another example that we would need one instance of an object and that's uh, you know creating a logger for your application okay so these were some examples about the situations that we need one and only one instance of an object now the question is how can we make it all right so let me explain everything uh, via a live demo and put everything uh, inside the uh, slides as your reference so let me bring up my eclipse um, this is my eclipse here okay so let me close this and let's start from the scratch so we close this uh, you know project and we create a new project it can be java project simple java project is enough so let's call it project name as let's say design patterns right so and inside that let me create a package let's call it design pattern dot singleton All right and inside this package i am going to create a class let's call it my singleton okay so we want to make this 
class uh, as a, a singleton design pattern. All right. So what do we need to do? The first thing, since we want to prevent the instantiation of this class, so how can we instantiate a class using the constructor? So the first step is to make the constructor as a private. It won't. It, it will be will be invisible from the outside of this class. So private my singleton. Um, that's it. Yeah. So the instantiation is banned from now on. Okay. Second uh, second step is to create to instantiate this class. So let's say private my singleton let's call it for example single single instance equal to new my single tone yeah you can bring up your uh, eclipse and follow me so now we have instantiated this uh, here um, so we have one instance of this class here. Now, the question is how can we uh, make it available to other classes, the clients of this class? Okay, so now our job is to create a public. So this is the only public we have here. So a public method whose job is to return this instance. So actually this is a getter for this guy. So uh, my singleton, so it returned this. And also uh, we can call it get single instance, All right? and we just we can just return that in you know that reference return a single instance that's it okay so up to this point we are done right so this guy will be you know when when this class is accessed for the first time this will be instantiated. So one instance of this class are available here. And the other classes can use this method to get that object reference. Cool. Yeah. OK, so how can we uh, use this? Uh, I'm going to create a new class here. Let's call it, for example, uh, singleton client or my singleton client all right so in this class we want to use that all right so let me create a main method okay okay so my singleton okay let me create this side by side Right. My single tone, let's call it single one, equal to, okay, so first let's see we can instantiate that. Definitely we cannot because the, there is no constructor there, but just for sure, new my single tone. What is the complaint here? You see, the constructor is not visible. Yeah, we knew that. OK, so how can we uh, get access to that guy? So we would say my singleton. Since it is a, a static method, oh, by the, by the way, we need to make it static like this. And also, we need to make it this static. Okay, now we are good. Yeah. So since it is a static method, this method is a static, we need to call it static statically like this. Get the single instance. 
like this. So this is a reference to that object. And, and also we are claiming that if we create another one, let's say single two, we want to say that this is referring to the same instance. We are, you know, this is the same object reference. How can we prove that? To prove that, uh, let me create something here. Uh, let's say private string, let's call it S for simplicity and just hello. Yeah. Okay, so now we have another instance field, instance variable here. Uh, let me create uh, Alt Shift S, a getter and setter for that. All right, we can use the Eclipse features to create uh, some getters and setters. Now my job is, uh, you know. So these two guys, uh, if I print out uh, the 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 uh, that s, both of them should sh should show the hello definitely. All right. So sys o, and let's call it single one equal to. Let me add the single one. Let me, uh, you know, use the getter of that S to show the uh, the hello here, and the same thing for the single two. Yeah. All right. So up to this point, let me run the application and see what we get. Yeah, definitely we will get two uh, hellos here. Okay, so now I'm going to change one of those singles. Let's say single one. I'm going to use the setter of that. And let's call it, for example, by something like that. Okay. Okay, now if I print out both of them, you will see that both of them are changed, right? Okay, so the f yeah, let's let's keep the first one as well. You see, single one and single two, both of them are changed as the by. It means that we are working on the same object. All right. Okay, now let's see what we got in the. Um, in our uh, lecture notes. Yeah, I explain all of them here. Uh, this is just for your reference. So this is the sample code that we have seen. Yeah, yeah, just remember that this is, this uh, you know, this uh, instance variable should be static. And this one should be static too. So the access to this uh, static variable, instance variable, actually it's not instance variable anymore. We cannot call it instance variable. This is class variable because it is static. All right. So it means that only once it will be created. Okay. And in the next slide, I explain how we can access uh, that instance by using a static way of the calling that method. And here is the explanation. All right, here uh, we have the uh, UML diagram of this singleton guy. Uh, this is the variable, instance variable. Again, it's, uh, you know, it's not variable anymore. It is uh, just an, uh, you know, class variable, right? And also here, uh, we have the method. And just look at this. The class is aggregating itself, 
right? One, two, one. All right. So now let me give you some notes about this. Uh, as we, you know, mentioned before, this is a creational design pattern, and it it will be used very rarely. All right. And the material that I just mentioned are the main idea. In practice, you know, there are some professional things that you need to follow. All right. And one of them is being the thread safe. That probably we will talk about that at the beginning of the at the end of the uh, simul, uh, semester all right okay one more time uh, let me give you the examples that what are the common applications as we saw in the you know previous uh, slides so global random generator is one of them database connection logging yeah creating a logger to create uh, log files and also I want to add here the caching if you want to cache some information of your application uh, you know singleton uh, can be used to create a cacher which is job whose job is you know caching the information that you would like and yeah there are um, some more but yeah you can research for them and that's it what i had here uh, for the singleton pattern so overall we can say that those um, you know those situations that we have some expensive resources uh, like you know database connection to the database is an expensive operation logging because it needs to, uh, you know, call, use the uh, file system, it is expensive from the time, uh, you know, from the efficiency point of view, I am talking about. Caching is an expensive. So, so those situations that we have an expex, expensive resources to be used in your application, uh, we use this singleton pattern. What is composite pattern? Let me explain that via an example. So let's say we have a sales program from a, you know X company. We, we don't care about that. It's a, let's say it's a retailer. And the important part is that they provide three products, suit, shirt, and shoe. OK, so. Uh, can be more at the future so you need to always put some room for extensions all right okay so each product has name price and discount and also they provide uh, a bundle of some of these guys so a bundle of them yeah which is a combination of you know one two or three products all right it can be any uh, well actually one is, is is nonsense but at least two or more all right so our job is to design an application that an order class we have an order class it can have uh, you know this order class uh, is is going to aggregate these products one two or more products or even we have a bundle we, we need to have a bundle as well okay so this is this is the goal so for this uh, design pattern I won't show you the live demo and uh, that's your job but i explained the code and uh, you know the structure of the application uh, and uh, i expect that you guys bring up your um, ex uh, ec uh, eclipse and try to follow whatever i am saying you know i mean try to create the classes the required classes step by step okay so so here is one 
naive approach. Okay, we have a product class, all right, and for the bundle, since it is a list of the product, right, so we can, you know, we can create a list of the product, something like that, for the bundle. So the product is product, right, and for the bundle, we can create a list of them. All right. Okay. So since an order, an order class can have multiple product and multiple bundles. So that's why we need to aggregate a list of product and a list of list of product. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. So like this. So this is the instance variables of the order class. So, uh, okay, so the list of the products, because we can have multiple products, and this list, list of product is actually bundle, right? And the list of bundles, it is, you know, we are aggregating uh, multiple bundles in our order class, all right? So, yeah, as a general rule, I am telling you, if you see something like this, list of, list of something, something is wrong. Yeah, you should rethink about your design. So that's why I say it's a naive approach. All right. Okay. Another approach would be creating two classes, product and bundle. Right, and product is you know it's a regular class. It has n name, price, and discount, as I explained before. But what is bundle class? Bundle class is actually a list of products. All right. So inside the bundle class, we have an instance variable which is a list of the product. So here is the uh, UML diagram. So this is product class. This is bundle class. You see here inside the order we have a one too many for the product, one too many for the bundle. That's fine. Up, you know, up to this point. And the bundle itself has, you know, aggregates the product uh, as a one too many. All right. Okay, so this is another approach. And let's see the code. All right, so here is the, uh, inside the bundle class, inside the bundle class, we have a list of the product, all right? And uh, also here, this is the inside the order class, we have a list of the product as the product and list of the bundles as the bundle. So inside the order, we can have, uh, you know, we can aggregate uh, both of these two guys as a one, two, many. Okay. So what is the problem of this approach? The, you know, the problem is the bundle is a product. We we don't need two different classes. So you get the point. Bundle is a product actually. So that's that's why we don't need to have two things like this. So we have now you know two concrete classes like this, and our dependency of the order now it has dependency to a class called product, a class called bundle. So that's the problem, actually. So that's why I well, would say, no, that's not a good idea. So what is the best design then? The best design is actually the composite pattern. Composite pattern is, is saying that you need to create an abstract class or abstract interface interface actually is abstract some something like this 
let's let's call it product int and then uh, all of these uh, you know product will implement this uh, interface the bundle the bundle class also uh, implement this and inside the bundle we have uh, you know aggregated one to many the same interface right so this is called the composite pattern okay so what did we do here so we had one product class which was concrete class bundle class right and the order had dependency to two concrete classes but here now we have the order class that has dependency to an interface so having having as we will see later having dependency to an interface is the best way all right okay so this was the composite uh, design pattern what is facade design pattern let me explain first the situation that could happen in practice so you have a client class who has dependency to many other classes so, like something like this so let's call uh, let's say uh, we have a class a class b class c all right each one has some methods and client class you know has dependency to all of them and also just look at this it is using some of those methods not all of them for example from the a class a it is just using a1 this guy and from the b it is just using b2 and from the c it is using both of them all right so in this situation so as you see the number of dependencies uh, is you know here is just three so probably in practice if if this is the case you know it's a few classes and uh, you know the number of methods that we are ignoring and we don't need is a reasonable uh, number then we would say okay that's fine we, we go with this plan but in some situation this is not the case so the number of classes are a lot the number of methods of each class is a lot and but as a client we just need a few of them okay so and also another situation might happen uh, that from let's say from the security point of view we have a problem uh, let's say some of these methods you know have a security problem a uh, security problem I mean uh, we don't need to expose them to everyone all right in this situation in this situation we use facade design pattern so what is facade design pattern so easy we create a middle class here let's call it facade class so by the way facade is a french name uh, which means the face of a building all right so you will understand why we you know we use the facade keyword for this design pattern so we create a middle class like this let's call it facade class and you know it it has dependency to all of them and it just pick those methods that we would need and we want to expose to the you know this particular client and then client instead of having dependency to class a class b class c it has just dependency to one class and this class is restricting or limiting the methods that should be exposed to this particular client all right so easy right so that's why we call it facade um, design pattern what is a strategy pattern 
So let me explain uh, the situation that might happen. This might happen. All right. So sometimes we need to use several variants of the of you know an algorithm, right? And inside the class, and that class usually we call it context class. Here is some examples, you know, concrete examples. For example, we want to sort a collection, but you know that we have different, uh, you know, we, we might have different criteria for sorting. For example, uh, just as an example, uh, here is, uh, let's, let's say we have a rectangle class, all right? So rectangle class has a, uh, width and the height, right? And we have a collection. Let's say we have a list of the rectangle class. Yeah, we we will see this, uh, you know, syntax uh, later. All right. Okay. So, uh, how can we sort this rectangle list? We have different criteria for this. For example, maybe we want to sort the rectangle objects based on the area or we can have we can sort them based on their let's say width all right or the perimeter right you see we we might have different criteria to sort a collection of lists all right so this is one of those examples for uh, you know, a strategy design pattern. Another class is we want to connect to the database, but the database can be different databases, such as, for example, SQL, MySQL, right? Or it can be DB2, IBM DB2, or Oracle, or so forth. Yeah, MongoDB, we have a lot of uh, different my uh, databases right so we want to create one class but it cl this class should not stick to a specific uh, database we want to reuse it for different type of uh, strategies or different type of databases right in these cases we use a strategy pattern Another uh, example could be, uh, you know, you, you write uh, an AI program and you want to solve a puzzle, but we have different algorithm for solving that puzzle, right? You don't want to hard code one specific algorithm to solve that puzzle. So, yeah, this, this is another uh, example of the uh, strategy pattern. And also our very familiar animal voice game you remember that so we had different keys for different animals all right so yeah let's let's uh, let's uh, let's see the uh, you know the uml class diagram so here is the uh, connection to the database so let's say we have a sales class and this sales class wants to connect to database so if you make some dependency to you know different uh, uh, different databases it's not a good idea so you create a, an interface let's let's call it db connect int for example or db connect and then your sales class will uh, you know, has some, you know, the dependency to this interface. And then you can create some other classes for different type of the uh, databases. For example, MySQL, Oracle, and so forth, right? The, these are some classes that in your application, right? So if, if you follow this uh, database interface, you know, usually they have just some abstract uh, methods that this MySQL just need to implement that, all right? Or Oracle need to implement that interface. From now on, 
So since the sales has dependency to this, and this is the parent for all of these guys, yeah, I mean, all of these guys can be considered as the, the child for the DB Connect. So based on the polymorphism rule, you can pass the MySQL, which is the child for the DB Connect, to the you know parent guy. Yeah. So if you are saying that this is the, the same as the polymorphism, yes, this is the same as polymorphism. So this is called the strategy pattern. So here is the you know generic version of the same thing. So the context is the, the class that uh, needs to have different strategies and we create a strategy interface like this and this is the method that should be implemented by all of the concrete classes all right and yeah this is this is uh, exactly the, uh, the you know some some sh you know some version of the, the uh, polymorphism okay and we call it a strategy pattern as uh, yeah this this is the one that it will be uh, used extensively extensively strategy pattern uh, since it is actually the polymorphism that's the reason that it is being used uh, um, extensively in the practice all right but yeah, yeah probably you will asking hey if we ha already had polymorphism so why should we uh, create a you know, new design pattern and we call it strategy pattern? That's a valid question. That's a valid question. But the answer is design patterns, when you know, they created the design patterns, they didn't uh, intend that those design patterns are only for the Java or on, are only for uh, the the you know object oriented programming languages so it means that design patterns are language independent right so maybe we are writing a code with a language that does not consider or does not f support the polymorphism right that's the reason that we, you know, even though we have the polymorphism feature in Java, but, uh, you know, the, again, they created a, a strategy pattern, design pattern for that. What is template method pattern? Yeah, let me, let me explain that via an example. And the best example is our very famous cat and dog, right? So what was what was the cat class when we were, we were talking about the polymorphism? And I uh, you know I I use the same classes in different places uh, to cover some materials here. So this is another uh, usage of the cat class. So cat extends an animal abstract class. So what we, was the uh, the animal abstract class? It had one uh, actually, this is a little bit different than the other examples we had before. So we have an initialize voice method here, which is an abstract method. And also we have a concrete method here, uh, which let's, let's call it show voice, for example. And the, our focus is this guy, the play voice play voice so inside the play voice we are calling initialize voice which is an abstract method yeah we saw this before right and also we are calling a concrete method but the concrete method is you know very regular thing but the strange thing and very interesting thing is that inside the concrete method we are calling a, a, an abstract method. Yeah, this is a feature of the object-oriented 
uh, you know, programming languages like Java. Okay, so but yeah, just remember that this is happening and this is possible because it is an abstract class. Yeah, inside the abstract class, we can have abstract method like this. And yeah, even though it is not implemented yet, but we can use it inside a method, a concrete method or even uh, yeah just a concrete method all right okay so let me show you the uh, uml diagram so this is the abstract class and we use this sign to show that it is an abstract class um, all right yeah we have an abstract method here and we have two uh, you know one show voice was the uh, concrete method and this was concrete method too but inside that we call an abstract method all right and here is the cat and our dog so it has a voice instance variable and it needs to instantiate this guy and since these two guys are uh, you know concrete methods they will be and in the, the public of course they can be uh, inherited by uh, cat and dog class okay so using this um, you know being able to call being able to call an abstract method inside the concrete method is the base of the template method design pattern okay so yeah this the all of these are uh, for your reference i uh, explained them uh, the only thing that left is the concrete method that you know in which we we call that abstract method that method is called uh, template method okay so let me show you a generic version of this uh, um, design pattern so you we have an abstract class right here and we have uh, let's say uh, you know two or more abstract methods here and inside this method we call those abstract methods and this method is called the template method design pattern so, so actually this is the template method right and that's it so it's not uh, something very strange uh, the only thing that we can say here being able to call an abstract method inside a concrete method that's it and we have seen this before but we didn't know that its name is template method design pattern okay so uh, that's what we had from the template method but you know at the end let me uh, summarize that what is what are the advantages of the design patterns when we use design patterns you know we can speed up the development process because you know they are known when we learn them it's a you know so, you know a very uh, you know a very concrete solution, right? So it will speed up the development process. As an example, probably uh, I can uh, you know take this example. For example, the quadratic uh, equation, right? And we have a solution for that x1 and x2, right? S something, right? So you, you know solving this problem solving this problem by using this solution is very you know very quick right instead of you know trying to solve this problem and reinventing the wheel yeah that's not a good idea but using this template this template solution it will speed up you know the you know solving this problem and the same thing happens for the development process so using the design patterns you really speed up but you know to learn them it takes a while 
I am telling you. And also, the developers can communicate, you know, by using a well-known name. For example, you say, uh, one can say, hey, yeah, you can use, for example, a uh, singleton method here, and it is known, right? So communication between the developers can be easier. And also, your code will be a standard when you use the design patterns, yeah? And also... Uh, based on this uh, information that we have seen so far, the code can be more readable. And since it is more readable, definitely it is more maintainable. All right, that's what I had for this lecture. See you guys in the next lecture.